Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome into another guide for NO 1800. In today's, we are going to look at the investor tier of the game and take a look at some items and specialists that you can use to start optimizing your end game productions. Now, this is just base level stuff. We're not going to get into skyscraper things. We will talk about that in another episode. So with that, let's start with the very beginning with Champagne. Now, luckily, Champagne is actually a fairly easy production chain. One champagne seller uh, produces at 30 seconds and then with electricity, which again, you should be providing to it, it goes down to 15 seconds. That makes the glass maker an easy one to one for this. Now, the problem comes with vineyards. Vineyards produce very, very slowly at two minutes. So for one vineyard to supply one electrified champagne seller, you need eight of them. And that's quite a bit. They do take up a fair amount of space. Now, of course, what you want to be doing with Bright Harvest is tractoring them up. That is going to increase their productivity considerably. You'll be able to get away with having two vineyards with tractors on them to supply one champagne seller. But, of course, we're going to talk about some items and stuff that I personally like to use early on to increase that even further and get some more benefit out of it. First and foremost is the metal winning producer. He is an epic specialist. You can find him at Eli's Harbor. He does affect also grain farms and red pepper farms. So keep an eye out for him and you might want to put him on grain farms if you have a lot of those. Um, I especially just like to put him on the vineyards because it does impre uh, improve that productivity by 40%. And he does have the extra goods ability on him, which gives us one champagne every eight cycles. So he is really, really good for getting extra champagne out of your vineyards and grain farms and red pepper. The reason I like this so much is because champagne is one of the goods that I like to export in Docklands. It's very easy to produce. Doesn't take up much space other than the vineyards themselves. And champagne has a fairly good export ratio on it. So he is a specialist I like to get early on and start getting that stuff going in Docklands. Now, Alexander Hancock is one that some people be like, eh, number of modules increase. But this one here is actually not bad. A 35% module increase uh, with a 80% productivity boost is not bad at all to me. I think this is decent enough to go ahead and use him early on in the game and get some more productivity. The 35% uh, module increase is somewhat more negligible. So I don't worry about that too, too much. I like to go ahead and just use that and be done with it. And then always like to toss on a Ferris Al Sarami as usual. Now, of course, there are other specialists you could get, such as um, there's one called Cosmo Castelli. He's a legendary. He actually increases productivity only by 70%, but he does decrease workforce by 80%. He is how you can get your vineyards down to zero workforce. Although, you know, honestly, three farmers... Not that big of a deal to me. I'll go ahead and deal with it. There are other things, of course, such as the steel plows and seed fertilizers, but those are a little more difficult to get because you need, do need to find them either through World's Fair or Research Institute or get lucky on expeditions and such. Now, there is one other specialist I do want to talk about with the whole champagne chain, and that is uh, Elise the Nose Bouquet. Now, she is a legendary specialist, so again, she is a much later game thing. You're going to have a hard time finding her uh, early on if you do consider yourself super lucky. But she has a very simple ability of increase, increasing productivity by 50%. The big thing, though, is she does have a unique type of specialist pool. Now, these aren't specialists that you cannot get any other way. It just changes the pool of your public mooring to have a particular set of them that will show up there. Now, I'm not going to go through the specialist pool. I'm going to have it down in the description. And you can check out the description where you can see the nose specialist pool and which ones they are and the percent chance of them showing up at your public mooring. So she's very useful if you want to try and farm some of those legendary specialists. Now, there are two more items I do want to talk about real quick. One of them is from the Passage DLC. It is the Cola Mola Wola machine. It affects rum distilleries, champagne cellars, and advanced rum distilleries. Increases productivity by 25%, but it gives you coffee every 10 cycles. Now, that's, a, that's not very often, but you're bound to have several champagne cellars and quite a few rum distilleries. So this is a good way to produce extra coffee. Very, very nice. If you want to check this one out, go to the Arctic, go over to 
Nate's airship and check it out over there. It will cost 50 Arctic scrap plus a few other materials, so just be ready to go do a little hunting. The other item is from Season 3, and this is the Get Rich Quick Volume 4. Now, this affects several different drink production facilities from Season 3, along with chewing gum as well, but it also affects all drink production buildings throughout the entire game. So what it does is it does have a couple of malices. Workforce and maintenance costs are increased, but this one gives you ethanol every cycle, every four cycles. This is one that I actually have a video about how to get tons and tons of ethanol from Schnapps Distillery actually uh, it's quite ridiculous but you could also put this on your champagne cellars and get some ethanol from that which you will need in the high life dlc for quite a few things so we are going to skip the new world stuff just for the moment we're going to stay right here in the old world and we're going to skip on up to jewelry real fast now there is one item I definitely think you should grab at Eli's Harbor for your jewelers, and that is the Illustrious Gemologist. It increases the attractiveness by three, fine, whatever, but it replaces the need for gold with just gold ore, so you no longer need goldsmiths in order to produce your gold to have for the jeweler. There is an upgraded version of this that is Goldsmith Gilbert. So either of these will work. Goldsmith Gilbert literally just increases the attractiveness a small amount. So either one of them will work perfectly fine. I like to get this one just because it's cheaper and it's quicker to get to. Um, with this right here and with the specialist for the pocket watches that replaces the need for gold with brass, you will not need gold for pretty much anything. And you can buy a little bit from the pirates as a backstock if you need it, but you will basically not have to have gold at all anymore. It's really, really convenient. Now, there are two legendary specialists for the jeweler that you could also take a look at later on. Susanna the Bright Woman is actually one that you can get fairly easily. She is a quest reward from the Queen for building the World's Fair on Crown Falls. Her and Fernando de Ferro are the two legendary two of the legendary specials you can get. There's a third one that you could also obtain for the, your Harbor Master. She affects clockmakers and jewelers, increases attractiveness, and gives extra goods one gold bar every five cycles. So if you combine her with something like the Illustrious Gemologist, you'll, you'll both not need gold bars and be producing gold bars too. So it's kind of nice. I really like use, having her around. The other is Francois Strindberg, a nice little throwback to Strindberg from Anno 2070. He gives you pocket watches every four cycles. So again, really, really nice. I love extra goods and removes the need for pearls. So completely takes out the need for pearls from the jewelry chain. So really, really cool specialist. He is a specialist that you can find with that at least the nose bou uh, bouquet specialist VIP pool. So if you have her slotted in, you have a good chance of finding him pretty quickly as well. Now for your gramophone factories, uh, the one that you really should try to find at Eli's Harbor really quick is Johan the Inventor. This removes the need for wood veneers and simply replaces it with just timber. So this is one of the very few instances where a building material becomes a input for a consumer good factory. Now there's a couple of legendary specialists we want to take a look at real quick. Professor Rom Devi, absolutely phenomenal guy, produces uh, extra goods of pocket watches, glasses, penny farthings, steam carriages, and sewing machines from light bulbs, factories, and gramophones. So he is super, super useful. He also provides electricity to those buildings so you can have them outside of the range of your power plants and still get electricity on them. So that is super, super nice. Now, the next guy is actually kind of unique, and I actually want to take a look at, at this specialist in the items screen because there's something I want to show you about this. We take a look at the gramophone factory. So he's right here. Seraphim Papadikus affects all carpentry works. The gramophone factory is considered a carpentry building. Okay? A lot of people don't know that. So anything that affects carpentry works, items like the Harker's Electric Treadle Lathe, the Master Craftsman Morris, Circular Ripsaw, anything that says 40%, anything that says affects all carpentry works will work on a gramophone factory. So keep an eye on those items because some of them are really, really nice. This one right here, I actually would use in place of a Ferris Al Sarami because it gives you a larger workforce reduction and the 50% productivity as well. So keep an eye out for those and use them when you can on your gramophones. Last but not least, let's take a look at our cab assembly lines. 
Steam carriages are a fairly complicated thing to make for a lot of people, but I like to try to make them as easy as possible. The first one I always like to find on Eli is Susanna the Steam Engineer. I will not produce Steam carriages until I have her. Uh, you know, in a normal game. Some games I play no items, but in normal scenario, I will not produce Steam carriages without her. She replaces the need for motors with just filaments. Boom. How easy is that? Instead of having to have all of your expensive to produce, kind of annoying steam motors, all you got to do is produce filaments, which just take some coal. How easy is that? It's so, so easy. Also comes with the extra goods of light bulbs every four cycles. So even better little uh, bonus right there. The next item I like to get, now this is not an item you can buy, you do have to get this from the World's Fair, is the Port Hampton Mass Conveyor. This increases productivity by 60% and reduces the workforce by 20%. So this one's a little bit more of a pain to get because you do have to get it from the World's Fair or Crafted in the Institute, but definitely recommend trying to find that one and get it going. Now this item is a little more controversial. Some people would say to instead use something like a bechamel converter to get more productivity out of it. But I like doing the steam engineer because this lets me have fewer penny farthings. I hate the bicycle factory, to be honest with you guys. I just hate it. I can't stand the bicycle factory for some reason. So any way for me to get penny farthings, another way besides having to build more of those is just a bonus for me. I like being able to get them from my steam motors and importing them from Docklands as well whenever I need some more. So I like using the Steam Engineer. If you want to, use a Bechamel Converter, use a Ferrisal Cerami, whatever you want to use. Whatever you want to use to increase your productivity. Another item, of course, everyone knew this one right here was coming, was Bruno the Iron Bright engineering giant uh, he affects quite a few factories and we're not going to get into all of it but he does give you advanced weapons and steam motors every third cycle he's completely overpowered he's just ridiculous and if you have dock lands he is going to be the way that you can basically import everything without having to produce hardly anything and i might make a little video on that later so that's basically it for the old world produced stuff for the investors so let's pop over to the new world and take a look at cigars and chocolate now, there is basically one item for cigar factories that I say is absolutely crucial that you need to get, and that is Torcador Lucia. Now, Torcador Lucia, what she does is she increases productivity, which is great, but she replaces the need for wood veneers with just timber. So again, just like the gramophones, all you got to have now is timber. You don't need to produce wood veneers. If you use items like this for your cigars and your gramophone factories, you don't need wood veneers for anything. Uh, you could actually produce wood veneers and export them in Docklands if you want to. They have a fairly decent export ratio rate, but you won't need them for your factories. Really, really useful. Again, this is one that I usually try to get her before I even start producing any of my own cigars, so I don't have to worry about the wood veneers. Now, for my chocolate factories, there is one item that I always want to have, and that is Charlotte the Chocoholic. She doesn't do much, just a small 40% increase, but the one sugar every four cycles is big because that just means you need fewer sugar refineries and less sugar cane. So I really, really like her. And again, I try to get her before I start producing my own chocolate. Now there is one item that for the chocolate factory that I think is kind of a trap and I don't think you should ever use this. And that is the quality chocolatier. Uh, he replaces the need for sugar with coffee beans, and it does give you one coffee every third cycle. Now, the one coffee every third cycle is, is pretty nice. That is very handy. But having to replace sugar with coffee beans, that part I'm not too keen on. Uh, you do need a lot of coffee unless you use a lot of different like stacked recipes from food and drink venues or different items like that to reduce coffee consumption. You're going to need a lot of coffee, so you're probably going to need a lot of coffee beans. Now, if you're importing coffee with Docklands, then you probably don't need coffee beans for anything. So this right here might be OK. But if you're not doing that, I don't really think the benefit of having to take up more space for coffee beans that are not used directly for coffee is that handy that makes sense i just don't think having to take up space 
with more coffee beans that are not being used for coffee just is any good. I don't I don't really like that idea. Uh, the sugar and the sugar cane, you can actually buy that up to seven per minute at end game from Isabel. So you can get a lot of sugar and sugar cane from her. Can't buy coffee beans from her. I don't really find this one that useful. Again, there are situations where he could be useful, like if you are just not using coffee or if you are getting it from Docklands. There's different reasons why this one might be okay, but I would say like in your general gameplay, I don't think he's worth it. And I think I would consider him kind of a trap card and I wouldn't, I wouldn't go for him to be honest. The last thing I want to talk about real quick is gold mines in the new world. Now, yes, yes, I know there's about 5 trillion different ways to get gold. That's way better than gold in the new world, but just, just hear me out. It's not as bad as it seems sometimes. You can get gold in the new world and it's not that bad, okay? Just just hear me out. So normally, here's a gold mine in the new world. It takes 100 obreros each and it costs about 250. Mine costs 225 because I have the Captains of Industry effect, which is decreasing my maintenance cost. And they're super, super slow. Two and a half minute time. Oh my God, just go ahead and just drown me already. That's so slow. But with the right specialist, you can make this work a lot better for you. All right, so let's take a look at this little setup right here that you can easily achieve by purchasing specialists at Eli. Barras, Michaela the Mining Engineer, and a first-rate sapper. All right. Now, Michaela is kind of a big one here because she reduces the maintenance cost by 100, as well as reducing workforce by 100%. Now, the first rate sapper reduces by 75%. So you are kind of losing out on that, but the 50% productivity is really, really nice. And combine that with Ferris Al Sarami, you get another 50% productivity. So now if we take a look, we are at 1 minute 15 seconds with zero workforce, zero maintenance. That is so, so nice. Trying to have two or more gold mines within the range of one trade union in the new world is something I always look for and tell people to look for, even if you're not planning on getting gold from the new world, just in case you ever might want to do it, look for that. Try to settle islands that have two or more gold mines within the radius of a single trade union. Those are your key islands that you want to try and grab because you can do setups like this. You can get a little bit more out of it because right now we've got it down to a minute 15 seconds by swapping out Ferris for Jorg von Malking, Augur of the Auric. Now he is a legendary, going to take a little bit longer to get a hold of him, but he is lovely. You get gold ore, one every six cycles, and then oil, oil, one every one cycle. Now, if you don't have an oil harbor on this island, then that goes to waste. So I would recommend throwing down an oil harbor to collect the oil. It doesn't have to be transported anywhere. The oil goes straight into the oil harbor, and then you can take that oil and send it off wherever you want it to go. So we put him in there in, in place of Pharos. We get that down to a minute and eight seconds. Now, this island is a little special. There is no population on this island, so incidences cannot occur. So, let's boost those working conditions up to 50%. Now, we've got it down to 55 seconds. 55 seconds. That's pretty lovely. A little bit of working conditions, three specialists, and we have get a ton of gold out of here. Now, how much are we getting? We're getting... <laughs> Still a whole whopping three gold per minute from those two, but it's a lot better than it was without either of these. Just double check. What was it without it? One gold per minute. So still fairly slow, obviously, because there's only two gold mines being affected by this whole thing. But 55 seconds is a lot better than two and a half minutes. So keep an eye out for these sort of situations in the new world. Get a trade union on them. Get at least those three items that are easier to get your hands on Michaela, Ferris, and the first rate sapper later on you can replace Ferris with Yorg and get even more benefit out of it but for right now these three right here will save you a lot of workforce and money and time all right guys and that is it for me today that is just a good look at some of the base level investor stuff and some specialists that you can use to quickly get those 
industries up and running fast without having to build too many more factories and produce a little bit more out of them. There are a lot of other specialist combinations, a lot of other things you could do. Again, nolayouts.de lists a lot of the better specialists you can get and some different combinations you might want to check out. You can also make your own combinations on there just to see what the production will be if you use those. With that, guys, thanks for watching. I will see you in the next episode. Until then, take care.